Today, I'm gonna to be doing a mod that I've been waiting to do since the Destination Moab, Utah video. If you haven't watched that video, go to my channel and watch it. It's uh, very entertaining and I also had some problems. But if you watched it, you know that the biggest problem that I had during that whole trip was overheating. On you wanted to see your uh, pool, boy. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Well, it's a good place to break down that now. Yeah. Uh, the elevation mixed with the weight, mixed with not proper ventilation, just caused the thing to overheat so much. Uh, we even had to put snow on the engine over uh, Engineer Pass, I believe. I got all the snow in Colorado. Yeah, I know how to cool your car. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to do Tons, water pump. Man, not yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Alright, that definitely fixed it. Yeah. Yes. No more issues. Alright, Jake, Jake. Okay. Go, man. Thanks, Eric, for your snow idea. Of course. We'll keep these handy. Yeah. <laughs> to get it to cool back down uh, under 250. So today we're going to be alleviating some of that pain by updating and upgrading the radiator. So I decided to go with Miss Missy Motos. I got the radiator along with the hoses. These are just some of the tools I'm gonna to be using during the install. Radiator fluid, I just went with OEM radiator fluid. And of course, um, for burping the system, we had to do this once in Moab, Utah, and it really helped out. So I'm hoping that it'll perform great like it did before. And as far as draining the system, um, I already have my oil drain here and a funnel. I'm just gonna try to stick this up in there and uh, funnel it down. So let's get started on this process. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is make sure the engine is cold to the touch. I just got done cleaning it so I know it's cold. Everything's good here. Just gonna undo the coolant top. Open it up, put that to the side. And then go down here. So the drain is right there. What I'm gonna try to do so I don't have to take off this whole skid plate is prop this up here and then drain it down into the pan. Uh, we'll see how it goes. This is probably not the right way to do this, but what I ended up doing was, luckily the funnel fit right in the groove there. I open it up and it's draining into my old pan. I changed this, I don't know, a couple months ago so it doesn't doesn't look too bad. But we're just gonna let that keep on draining, and then move up to the top. So since that's draining, we're gonna take off the reservoir hose. Since we got aftermarket hoses from Mishimoto, we're gonna take this clip back and then pull off this hose here. That's it for that. A little bit of fluid up in there. We're also gonna move down, further down. And then remove this hose here, along with this hose here connecting to the radiator. 
you can use regular needle nose nose pliers they make needle nose pliers just for this or you can use these since I just had these available I'm going to use these Just remember which hose fits where. It'll help back in the reassembly of the new radiator. This one's still kind of leaking. I'm just gonna take a towel, put it in there real quick. This hose is already off, so let's see if we can move that. And then for me, since I have a auxiliary transmission, I just move the, uh, the oil drain a little different. So that's the transmission hose. I'm gonna undo this and try to move it further up here so it's out the way because I won't need to touch it until we hook it back up. If you put it up here um, higher than the drain plug, it shouldn't drain at all. Just the laws of gravity. All right. Let's work on getting this bad boy up now. So since we're already up here, we're gonna work on taking off the clutch fan. This is your clutch fan. It is connected by four bolts, 12 millimeter bolts. There's one right there, one right there, one on the side back there, and then one on this side, which doesn't look that tight. So that's interesting. So, four bolts right there, and then one on the other side. your 12 so this whole assembly from my understanding so pop out like like that and the next we're gonna move on to the fan shroud itself which is connected for mine right here So we're going to take both of these pieces, lift them up, take them out together. Let's 
this piece is just coming right in. Remember, we're going to keep that fan shroud because we're going to use it to uh, put back on the radiator. So this is a pretty cool view if you haven't seen a radiator like this before, which I haven't. That's it. So much room for activities down here. All right, next thing next, we're going to start taking off the radiator itself. If you look on the back side here, you can see how it has a bolt right there connecting it to the frame. There's one on the other side and there's one way down there. And of course, another one way down here. I believe that they are 12 millimeters and we need to get to them from the front. So if you look at your air dam here, there's one right there. Of course, one on the other side and there's one lower down i have this little cutout in my grill below my winch controller and you can kind of see it back there we're going to try to get back there with a swivel 12 millimeter millimeter um ratcheting winch and uh, try to get that down let's see how it works out all right we're going to test out this 12 see how it works Yep, those are 12s. All right, now let's get to the bottom. Probably gonna need another extension. So I have a longer extension here. I don't know, it's probably about 10 inches or so. I'm just gonna take off the short one. Put on the long one. See if we can get it to work. Just gonna lift up, pull out. Oh, forgot I need to remove this hose again. Lift up, pull out. There's still liquid in the radiator, so be cognizant of that. Once you get it out, just pour it straight into the bucket. Straight into your drain. However you're draining it. For me, this is how I just put it on the edge like that. And let it drain out. We're going to be reusing some of these parts. So don't throw it away quite yet. All right. Now that it's drained out, we're going to do a little comparison. See the difference. You can see here, here's the big difference. This is, of course, the OEM 
radiator aftermarket Mesa Moto radiator even if we stand them up side by side, by side. you can see how much thicker the aftermarket radiator is and I believe even the pressure on the caps are a little bit different too where it drains out at this is the OEM one and the aftermarket one that is also a the drain right there besides it has a magnetic drain to catch all those particles that end up in the bottom of your radiator so from we're going to use some of the parts from the OEM put on the aftermarket and make sure it's ready to go so let's get into it simple enough we're going to take out the old grommets here on the OEM like such clean them up and put them back in the same exact position on the aftermarket radiator uh, of note the important thing one of the most important things is the top ones have hooks so you can hook it onto the frame while you're putting it in there just make sure you take that into account when you're putting the radiator back in i find it easy enough to put them side by side clean up the part then put it on to the aftermarket radiator and then i'm also going to do the same thing with the hose in the back and then the uh the reservoir hose also so let's get it started there's a couple of things about putting this thing together that i wanted to point out um, one the clamps for these hoses, they aren't like your traditional hose clamps that come on the OEM. You can see that there. They're these types of clamps, but they're not your standard clamps. It looks like it's cut all the way through, but it's not cut all the way through. So you won't be slicing into your hose as you tighten it down. This one is tightened all the way down. There's no slicing in that hose um, for this one the orientation i decided to go go this way so i can tighten it from the front the orientation on this one is already up and the orientation i'm going to do on this one is going to be facing towards the front also so i can tighten it whenever it's in place moving on from there so this is the OAM back to the bottom. The nut is in the rear. And what this is going to do is whenever you put the OEM nut in the rear, put the spacer on. Let's see if I can do this here with one hand. Nope. All right, put the spacer on. And of course, the front of the bottom piece, like such, like that, whenever you put it into the bottom piece, whenever you pull that bolt for it, it's gonna just pull this radiator in. So that's the logic behind having these pieces facing this way. All right, now the important part, the top piece. Your top one, remember, has the little hooks right there. We're gonna take that, that hook, put it in there, and whenever we set the radiator inside the frame, this hook will hook it on and ensure that the holes are lined, lined up. We're gonna do that on both sides and uh, see how it goes. Um, it's starting to rain here a little bit. But uh, I want to get this done today before it starts coming down. And if you're familiar with military life, you know, if it ain't raining, we ain't doing mods. All right, let's do it. Uh, I'm just going to get everything started right now to make sure everything lines up and then we'll move on from there.
Now the difficult part is gonna be the bottoms down down here. So what I'm gonna do is take this 12, put it on the extensions that I have for it. And then install it by hand just to make sure it doesn't cross through. So let's get to it. Now that's all line, lined up, I'm gonna torque it back down. I'm just gonna use a uh, a hand bit for this. I don't want to torque it down too much and end up breaking something because that would be very, really, really sad. back up the main hoses yet the other hoses is because the fan is gonna sit right around here so we'll see how that works now what we're gonna do before we reinstall the fan we're gonna install some foam on each corner here we're gonna go ahead and make sure that the corners the edge here is clean this foam came with it Already pre-cut, pre looks really good. Go ahead and install that. Make sure it's good. So before I cleaned off the edges here. I also cleaned off the, the fan shroud itself. Just why not, if you have it off, why not just go ahead and do it? 
call it a day. Perfect fit, straight out the box, no cutting or anything. What this foam will do is close that gap in between the shroud and the new radiator and force more air to go through the radiator. This time, we're gonna reinstall the shroud and the clutch fan together. So take the shroud. Clutch fan's gonna go into it. And we're gonna install them together. The bottom of the shroud kind of fits into these cut cutouts that's in the bottom so we're going to make sure that that fits as needed we're going to connect this shroud real quick so you don't have to worry about that New bolts are 10. Having a hard time starting this 10, so I just got a deep socket here. Just gonna start the 10 on this side. Making sure it's in there hand tight before I start torquing down stuff. Remember, don't want to cross thread the new radiator. That'd be uh that'd be terrible. it for that and we're gonna start hooking up the remaining of the hoses and then put the clutch fan back on the reservoir hose comes straight off the OEM piece no clamps here just goes straight on Put this hose back back in place. Remember, this goes on the inside of the bigger hose. Below it. Connects to the top. We're still gonna use the OEM clamps with this one. back to the radiator and then we're going to move to the one on the bottom which for me is coming from the radiator to the alternate cooling lo location then into Uh, we're going to connect it using the factory clamps. Now 
All of our hoses are hooked back up. And now, the fun part, putting the fan back on. You have a person with tiny hands. Now would be the time to go get them. Yeah, we're good on that end. All right, time to tighten this bad boy down. Once again, we're going to be using our 12. Sweet. So the fan's on. Next is the bleed system. So with this radiator, we're going to use the B cap with the red B valve. Put that in there as such. Push down on it, and we need to give it a little bit of oomph. Make it seal down a bone there. There it is. And now we're gonna put our funnel in there. This is like a little stopper drain thing. We don't need that yet. Make sure that that is in there. We're gonna take our OEM coolant. Go ahead and dump it into the system. While it's doing that, I'm gonna make sure it's not leaking from anywhere below. Just wanna make sure. One complete gallon. That's about a gallon and a half. See what that does. It stopped bubbling for right now. I'm gonna add a little bit more. We're almost at one and three fourths of a gallon of coolant. What I'm gonna do is start up the vehicle, let it run and get up the temperature. So there's a couple ways that you can tell whenever your car is done bleeding. Oh, 
one way is this hose up here to be hot. Uh, this one isn't that hot right now. But you can see whenever I do that, it kind of sucks in the bubbles there. So it hasn't opened up yet. The, the coolant has been changing colors. So, uh, so that's good. Me just going through the whole system. It's been about 15 minutes. Let's see this one here. Yep, it's not hot down there yet. But for me, I have the scan gauge three. And it tells you the coolant temperature there. So we're not quite there yet. So what I'm gonna do is turn up the heat. Wide open. Give it another five, 10 minutes and see where we're at. Okay. So everything is looking good. The air is working, the heat's working. I don't think I messed it up too bad. So we'll see how it goes in the future. Um, right now, these are the temperatures that I'm currently running. Seems to be stable. y'all posted yeah, with uh, any updates I have but so far I, I like it um, of course this radiator isn't supposed to make the temperatures lower but it is supposed to make it last a little bit take a little bit more abuse whenever you're out on the trail um, in those lower RPMs and just pushing it but not as much airflow so we'll see how that goes over time Hopefully it'll, it'll go well. We'll see how it goes. So if you don't mind, please like, share, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. Until next time.